Thanks. Understand and respect their constraints. There are things in negotiations that you deserve, that are rightfully yours, that you, quote, should get, which you will not get simply because your hands are truly tied. And the sooner and the more effectively you figure out where they have more and less flexibility, where the hands are truly tied and where they might be able to give, the more likely you can navigate the deal in the direction that's going to get you what you want while allowing them to say yes. You need to put yourself in their shoes. You need to respect the fact that just because you want it and you think it's rightfully yours, it may be that there actually is some issue there where they have some hard constraints. Think about why they might reject your legitimate demands. Now, as you start giving them this benefit of the doubt, again, step back a little bit because there's a broader point I want to make. Very often people will come to me and they'll say something like, you know, I'm dealing with these folks and uh, they're completely irrational. Or I'm dealing with these folks and they're very, very stubborn. Or I'm dealing with these folks, it's a very difficult negotiation because they're very untrustworthy. Never in my life has somebody come up to me and said, I'm in this really tough negotiation, I'm the irrational one. I'm the untrustworthy one, I'm the stubborn one. And I start to think that the nicest people on the planet must reach out to me for help because it's never them. What I want to suggest to you is that it doesn't do you any favors to see them as irrational. I got to tell you, and I've been in many parts of the world with many different kinds of negotiations and conflicts and disputes. The people you're dealing with are not irrational. It is highly unlikely that you're dealing with someone who's actually irrational. By irrational, I mean someone who is knowingly doing something that they know will reach the opposite of outcome of what they want. That's probably not what's happening. That would be irrational. I know A is going to cause B. I don't want B, and I'm still going to knowingly do A. That's not how people behave. Usually what looks like rationality to us is one of two things. It could be ignorance, or it could be that they have interests that we don't fully appreciate. So when somebody is saying no to what you know is the best offer they're ever going to get, and they're walking away when it's only going to be worse for them if they walk away than saying yes, that seems irrational, but maybe it's not irrationality, it's ignorance. Maybe they haven't fully understood the value to them. And if that's the problem, the solution might be, how do we educate them about the value we bring to the table? Or it could be that they have different interests. Maybe accepting this offer makes them look bad. Even if it's, it's the best deal they're going to get, but saying yes maybe makes them look bad. And they don't want to look bad. That's not irrational. They just have other interests. Or it's the best deal they're going to find, but if they do it, it sets a bad precedent in future deals. There's something else going on. Before you jump to assuming somebody is irrational or crazy or evil or out to get you, step back and really try to understand how do they see the situation? What's actually driving this behavior? How does this person go to bed at night not thinking of themselves as irrational or crazy or evil? And when you have this level of empathy, you're not doing it to do them a favor. When you see the world this way, when you have this level of empathy, you're actually doing yourself a favor. Because if somebody is irrational, the only solution is to lock them up, all right, or walk away. If they're evil, they must be destroyed. But if there's something else going on, it gives you more levers to push and pull to solve the issue, all right?